is going on, Nissan Nation? From all things Nissan here in Middle Tennessee to wherever you're watching us here on YouTube, this is your Nissan Nation podcast, and I am your host, David Boyd. We got business. We got to take care of some business first. If you would go over to my buddy, lifestyleoffroad.com, go to their Facebook page. You can see this cool, this cool uh, hoodie they sent over to us. Go over there, man. Check out what they do. Go to their Facebook page and just hashtag Nissan Nation Podcast and post it on their page, and that's it. I want to see how many people actually watch this and will uh, participate in our little experiment. Uh, if you haven't, go like and like their page. Uh, Nissan or um, Lifestyle does a bunch of stuff for the Nissan brand. They do other brands as well, but uh, they're a big supporter of, of the Nissan brand. They have uh, been big supporters of Went Windrock, which we run. They've been big supporters of Gone Moab and other events. And uh, they do all kinds of cool stuff. They do a bunch of gear like this, which is, look at this. This is like some cool, unique, uh, it's camo, but it's all black. It's really cool. They do stuff like this. They do vinyl. They did the vinyl wrap on our Nissan Xterra. They do all kinds of custom cut out vinyl. So if you ever need anything, you know, custom cut, Hello Grandma, whatever you want to put on your car, we don't judge here at the Nissan Nation Podcast. Go check them out. Once again, go hashtag Nissan Nation Podcast on, the, on any of their social medias. And uh, just so they know that the, the NNP sent you over that way. So, this week, let's get into this a little bit. I don't know, unless you're living under a rock. Carlos Ghosn. Does that name ring a bell if you're a Nissan fan? Well, it should, because he uh, led the company for 20-some years. He, um, you know, he we talked about, it's like the Christmas gift that keeps on giving. So, last year, you know, it was around Thanksgiving, U.S., um, he was arrested for... Uh, Potential embezzling funds. He, uh, they come to find out he had done a bunch of uh, buying a bunch of houses and property under the the Nissan uh, corporate structure. He was paying some, uh, I think it was his sister or somebody to do a bunch of interior decorating and and not like at normal prices, like some crazy jacked up prices. There was a lot of a lot of wrongdoing by old CG as I like to call him, and um, he was arrested. And usually when the Japanese arrest you. They, it's not like the U.S. structure of where you're presumed innocent till you're proven guilty. They, um, they not bypass that, but they do their due diligence before even arresting you. They, they have a solid case before they arrest you. So if you're arrested in the, the Japanese judicial system, you're probably guilty. Now, I don't exactly know how it works over in Japan. Uh, I don't want to find out because <laughs> that means I've done something wrong, but Everything I know about it is is uh, they are tough on criminals. Like I know I know when he was arrested initially, like he was put in the the general the general kind of I won't say population because once again I don't know how it works over there exactly, but he was treated like a normal criminal where they get like I think it's like a bowl of rice a day something like that. Um, old CG lost some weight, man. I don't know if he was trying to do the keto diet or whatever he was doing. He was he was looking a little cut, but he lost quite a bit of weight and uh. I, I guess when um my cat is sneezing. Get her out, buddy. Get her out. You good? Not yet? Okay, I think he's good. So he lost a bunch of weight, I guess, and they wouldn't allow him to talk to his wife and, and the only person he could talk to was his lawyer, and I guess his wife through his lawyer and all that did a you know, a bunch of however you communicate that way. But so through a bunch of negotiations, he was put on, I think it was last April, he was put under house arrest and house arrest, you know, you know, yeah, it's generally better than being in prison. And I'm assuming old, old CG, old Gone was, uh, probably living a nice, he had a nice place there in Japan. So I'm, I'm presuming he was living still a pretty good life, even though he couldn't, you know, he was very, uh, regulated on, on how he left and I know phone calls and stuff like that he could make, but old CG somehow escaped in a drum case. Ah. I don't, you know, it's it's like a James Bond thing or something. I don't know how they they did it, but phew, gone. He flew to, I believe it was Turkey, and from Turkey he went to his home country of Lebanon, which does not extradite criminals. Like they have no treaty with Japan to to want to get him out of there. And I know I know he's a French uh, citizen of some sorts, and also uh, a Brazilian residence of somehow. And I know both both those countries do not extradite people. They just they don't. They don't do it. So right now it's looking like in the favor of old, uh, old Gone, except for the fact that um, it somehow he had to plan this. And if you're home rest, you know, you're, you're can't do anything. Can't, you're very restricted on phone calls. You've, um, you've had to have help, right? 
and uh, obviously probably his lawyer, his, his that team has helped him somehow. I know they were in control of his passport, and unless somehow he didn't get his passport stamped leaving the country, which obviously he was put in his drum case, wheeled to the airport. He was on a private jet and flew out. I know once once he got to Turkey, those uh, the pilots and a lot of people were arrested. I think it was seven in total were arrested for um, suspicion on how he got out of the country. Uh, I think from there they drove him to Lebanon and. You know, supposedly he's going to this week going to have a big, uh, we're going to have a big reveal on, uh, hey, how I was mistreated through the Japanese government. And from Bloomberg, we'll read this. After making his escape, the former head of Nissan Motor Corps and Renault SA released an email Tuesday decrying the injustice and political persecution of the Japanese judicial system. Well, okay. Once again, the Japanese don't play around. They don't have the normal judicial system like, like, a lot of countries do where, where, you know, you go to jail for a minute, you, you get a lot of freedoms to talk to people, to set your case up. Once again, if you're probably arrested, I think their conviction rate was like 95% once they've arrested you. Like they don't play around. So the 65 year old faces charges of financial misconduct, rating corporate resources for his personal gain. And those, those rating of resources was, I think he bought three properties under the, the Nissan, um, corporate structure uh once again had family like doing all this stuff making all kinds of money off of it then come to find out he i think it was 80 million dollars he was uh, owed supposedly from nissan as a i'll delay my i'll delay all my my payments that you owe me for uh for working for nissan till towards the end of his uh his time with nissan but he wasn't paying taxes on them from my understanding. And I know here in the U S that he was uh, fined. I think it was $10 million for some of this wrongdoings. Um, I forget what the Japanese government, it was going to be a pretty heavy find. Um, and overall it doesn't sound like he's a very good dude. So I'm going to be curious this week when, um, when we find out his side of the story and I'm going to be curious in how he's going to flip this and be like, Hey, I was they're trying to just get me because he's going to say that the Japanese the, the Japanese there within Nissan didn't want this big merger. They were trying to push a Renault to merge with a Nissan, uh, Nissan Mitsubishi be, to make it one big entity because Nissan has been the big fish of that company. They're, they've been the guys that, that all the tech you see with the Leaf and everything. They've been at the forefront of all that. And, you know, not to say that Renault doesn't, doesn't do anything, but Renault is just more of a, we need, we need partners to help build these cars, you know, cheaply. So Renault, you know, they, they, supply some of the engineering Nissan supplies some of the engineering and they share the cost of or the burden of all that but ultimately uh he's going to say that that they Nissan just oh they weren't happy they didn't want to do this merger which they don't uh everything comes out Nissan does not want to merge Nissan would like to be just Nissan Mitsubishi again they do not want to merge with the French the French uh Renault but it's probably going to happen at some point because, you know, like you see with FCA has been pushing to merge with, uh, uh, I forget what the, the French company they've ended up trying to merge with. You know, they were trying to merge with Renault and make a super company. All these companies are starting to, you're going to see a collapse of the industry for before long. If they're all going to be just a handful of, of auto manufacturers because the cost to develop these cars, whether it be from restrictions that every government puts on them for safety and it's, it's getting sort of ridiculous how hard it is getting to be to develop a car. Like it's a billion dollars to develop a car. So imagine, imagine you've got, you've got say 20 cars within your fleet. That's a lot of money to uh, want to constantly renew, you know, and so you need partners. So yeah, once again, Nissan needs, needs Renault, but they don't need them at the same standpoint. They have infinity that helps share some of the cost. Um, Obviously, their Mitsubishi is still a new partnership with them, so there's going to be some new stuff. It's already talk about the next generation Frontier is going to be based off some of the Mitsubishi line. Um, Mitsubishi is known for everywhere, but in the states, they're known for making excellent SUVs. Uh, so I think by accident, maybe go and set Nissan up that they don't need the French. But all this rewinds back to the fact that the guy was kind of embezzling a lot of money and it was time for him to go. I think 20 years or whatever it was that he ran both of these co companies was probably way too long. I think you, uh, I think after, after so long running these companies, it's just, uh, you get used to people kind of kissing your ass a little bit and just nobody's going to tell this guy, the savior of, of Nissan, they're not going to tell him no really. 
So when, when you think you're the smartest person in the room, you start doing maybe things that like paying for houses out of a corporate account that you shouldn't have, or, or not maybe trying to hide your taxes through uh, the corporate structure. So anyways, so this week I will be very curious to, um, to see how he, uh, how he, uh, talks, how he tries to spin this, how he, uh, says how the big bad Japanese government or Nissan in general was trying to, they just didn't like him anymore. And they were really trying to, uh, to out him that way. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, this is, this is kind of a, it's, it's a, you know, we talk cars generally and it's hard to talk. You start getting into law and we're like, uh, you know, talk to me and Danny talk quite a bit about this. And it's like, how, how do we talk about this? Because clearly we are not, um, law historians or anything like that. We do, we do, the law is not what we know. We know how to, how to talk cars. But once again, let us know in the comments below what you think is, uh, is old CG as I like to call him. Is he guilty as, uh, guilty as can be or was he wronged by uh by the japanese government i am um, be curious i'm i'm really curious to what your t you guys takes on this what was going to be this week so once again go to lifestyle off-road go to their their facebook page wherever just hashtag nissan nation podcast and that's it you can post up a cool car whatever you want in a picture with it i don't care but just let them know that you uh that we talked about them this week and um once again hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet man we're on our goal to 1,000 subscribers. We're very honest about the why we want this is to start getting into the YouTube money so we can start funding uh, trips. We want to start funding trips to come to whatever your event that you're going to, whether it be, you know, ZCon or anything like that. Which ZCon is going to be in Nashville this year? How convenient. And it's the week before Went Windrock. Hmm. Um, whether or uh, Gone Moab or anything, you know, NISFest, wherever, we want to start covering more of these events. And uh, the easiest way to us fund that is uh, by you hitting that, that subscribe button, maybe dinging the bell if you really are interested in when we uh, these videos pop up. But that's it, guys. So once again, listen to the podcast, watch us here on YouTube, and uh, let us know what you think. So from all things Nissan here in Middle Tennessee to wherever you've been watching us on YouTube, this has been your Nissan Nation podcast, and we've been talking Carlos Ghosn right here. Peace.